Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today with something new. The next part of the course. Alright. And what was the next part? The next part is about sequential circuits. Sequential circuits. Okay. Now you have heard me using this word before. In which I told you that now is not the time. That was not the time to learn it. Today, the time has come. All right. This is the, the next half of the course. Okay. The final half. We have completed the first half of it. Okay. Till now, till now, the circuits that we have studied were combinational circuits. All right. They were combinational circuits. And what does combinational circuit mean? In combinational circuit, the present output only depends on the present input. All right. And how is that? Let's say, for example, we have uh, a half adder. All right. So we have two inputs and we have two outputs. Let's say this is sum and this is carry. So if you provided the two inputs, one and one, so what would be the sum? The sum would be zero and the carry would be one. All right, this is for the half adder. Now, if you change the present inputs, if you change the present inputs to let's say a one zero, so now the sum would be one and the carry would be zero. Now we know that this previous output had nothing to do with this present input now when we change it. All right. So such sort of circuit in which the present output has nothing to do, I mean this one zero, this red color has nothing to do with the previous output zero one, such sort of circuits are called combinational circuits. Until now, all the circuits that we've seen were combinational. Either that's an adder, subtractor, multiplexer, decoder, <clears throat> that all, okay? From today, we begin with something new, Call the sequential circuits. In the sequential circuits, what happens? The present output depends on present input and previous output. So it depends on two things, all right? It depends on the pre present input and the previous output both. This is the thing new, okay? Now if you see, so the present output depends on present input till here we have a combinational circuit. And the previous output, so this is something new. Okay? Now, how is that? So, we'll be seeing them in the next videos, inshallah, very soon. So, let's say I draw a blob diagram of it. Let's say this is a combinational circuit. Okay? So, it will definitely have an input. This is, let's say, the input. And definitely it will have some output. All right. This is a combinational circuit. Now for sequential circuit, what do we do? We have to take some part of this output. We take this output and we provide it back at the input. We take the output and we provide it back to the input to get a next state. Now this output taken is called the previous state. And with the help of this, combined with the present input, you get the next output, that is the next state. This output uh, provided is called the feedback. This is called the feedback. All right. Now a question arises, if we have to provide this, so do we provide it directly? 
I mean to say that the state was gone, the input was given, the output is gone. Now, how do you give it back in the next input, with the next input? So, for that, you have to store it somewhere. Alright? So, you don't give the previous output directly as an input. You first have to store it. Alright? And... We have to store it in some memory. Alright? We have to store it in some memory because we have to use it after some time. And this will input is given, you get an output instantly. Now to use that back after some time, you need to have it somewhere. And that somewhere is the memory. And this memory is now what? How to store it. So this memory basically, it's nothing but it is a flip-flop. And now what is a flip-flop? So we discuss that in a great detail in the coming videos. All right, now this is about it. Okay, so let's see, we, we, we see through an example. Let's say we have a counter. Let's say we have a counter and uh, let's say it's a it's a decimal counter all right so the decimal counter does what it adds zero it adds a one to the present state let's say we had an input zero so it added one to it to give us a one then we have added one to this one to get a two and then this two was added to a one to get a three and similarly, you go on and on till you get an 8 in the previous state. You add 1 to it and you have a 9. Now, how does this counter work? This counter now is an example of the sequential circuits because it requires the previous state. Now, this one, if I did not know that previous state was a 1, how could I have added another one to it to get the next state too. And similarly, now to get three, I require two, which means to get the next state three, I require the previous state two. And similarly, so on and on to get a nine, you need the previous state that is eight. All right, so that is a typical example of a sequential circuit. Now, how to store it? How to store bits? So, for there are different methods. We'll be seeing that through latches and flip-flop. But previously, a method was used uh, uh, that was to score a single bit number by using cascaded NOT gates. Now, what do cascaded mean? So, they mean in the combined form. Okay? And, and how was how was a bit stored? So like this, okay, I will show it to you. This is an odd gate. This is another odd gate. And this was also given over here. Now this is a basic structure to store a single bit. And uh, how do you do that? So let's say we have an example. Let's say I want to store one. So one is given at this input, all right? One is given at this input. Now the NOT gate will do what? It will turn it to a zero, the first NOT gate. The second NOT gate will turn the zero of the first NOT gate to one. And now at the output we have a one. This one is now connected back as a feedback to the input, which means that now it's again a one and it will be moving in so in such a manner and which means that we have stored one in these cascaded not gates all right so i believe this is an enough introduction okay to the sequential circuits and we end the lecture over here and the next video we see latches all right so that's all about it thank you very much for watching see you in the next lecture very soon inshallah till then take care Goodbye.